What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to another episode here on the NATO vs. Warsaw Pact group build. Today, we are pushing forward on our 148 scale Trumpeter SU-15 Flagon A, a kit that I am actually really enjoying, but I'm a little bit sad by the fact it doesn't have a lot of detail. So that's what we've been doing so far. Now, last episode, we added a lot of wire. We added a lot of different plastic parts we pulled out of the spares box. We added some photo etch, doctored up both the cockpit tub and the ejection seat. I like how the injection seat and the cockpit tub have looked so far, but I might need to do a little bit more work depending on kind of how I feel about it. Now the front nose wheel bay, we have not done any sort of scratch building on that, so we might have to do something a little bit later, but I want to first make sure that I've got references before we get into that too deeply. So for today, I figured we're going to go ahead and focus on some of the details on the fuselage. We also want to go ahead and work on the intake trunkings, make sure that those fit up inside, figure out how that all goes together, and then, well, we'll see what we can do with the wings and the wing landing gears. So first off, we can go ahead and take a look at the back of the SU-15, and you can see we have four of these openings. Now these are for air brakes. So what I want to go ahead and do is I want to figure out a way to close them down. Problem is, the kit is, of course, designed for them to be posed open, so chances are, they're not going to fit real well when we close them up. At least though they give us some inserts that we could, in theory, go ahead and glue up inside that would give us the detail needed for just a basic approximation of what those air brake wells look like. But of course, if we install those and we try to then put on our closed air brakes, they don't fit. So I think what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to completely forget about those air brake wells. I'm going to go ahead and use some basic strips of styrene. We're going to cut them into shape and then we're going to glue them to act as backing for each of these air brakes. That way we don't have to worry about installing the air brake wells, worry about the air brake sitting too proud. We have a little bit of backing and I think, honestly, this is gonna be a lot easier. A Little bit of extra thin Tamiya cement should go ahead and keep that blink off plate really tightly glued down. That should be fine, but it will be a little bit flexible so that if we do need to go ahead and push that air brake down just a little bit, it should conform a tiny bit to that air brake shape. So let's go ahead and fit an air brake and see how it looks. We'll just slide one of these right into place. Yeah, not too bad. I do notice that these are not the correct size. They're actually much too narrow, but that's okay. We will be fine with this. We're gonna glue all of these in place, glue the backing plates on, and just get this thing all nicely glued together. Again, I don't wanna have the air brakes open, so I gotta do a little extra work, but I think in the long run, it's gonna pay off. So let's just go ahead and queue up a quick time lapse. We're gonna go and install all the air brakes. We're gonna sand everything down, make sure everything is nicely fared in, and we'll see how we do. Let's go. All right, everybody, we are back and we're going to shift our attention over to the wings and specifically the missiles. Now, the kit is actually telling us to install two of these smaller air to air missiles as well as the two large missiles. And we're not going to do that. In fact, I'm building an early SU 15 and I don't see a lot of early SU 15s that have those smaller air to air missiles. So that means, of course, we're going to have to close them off. We're going to take some strips of styrene. I'm going to cut them into long lengths. Then I'm going to glue them together until they are basically the same width as that open 
happening. Then once that's good, I can go ahead and wedge a little bit more styrene, glue everything down, and then if I need to, I can drop a little bit of super glue and then just sand it down. I'm not sure this might actually do the trick. I might not need to use any super glue for filler. I'm not sure yet. We'll go ahead and check that out once we get to that point. As I figured, I do have to go ahead and add in one more tiny strip right here at the edge. That's fine. That's going to go ahead and hold everything together. Just a little bit of the extra thin Tamiya. That's going to go ahead and glue everything together. And I think we'll be good to go. Now, SU15 wheel wells are actually quite busy. They have a lot of these different features and they have some wires and they have some different gears and pistons and whatnot. So we need to go ahead and add those in. But in order to do that, we need to go ahead and drill in some holes and cut out some openings so that we can actually fit any of these wires and whatnot in there. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into another time lapse. We're going to start preparing the wing for some scratch building, meaning drilling some holes for some wires and for some cylinders and whatnot, as well as a few other parts and pieces like the intake trunkings and a couple other odds and ends. So let's push forward, see what we can do. All right, everybody, we are looking decent with that. Let's go ahead and do some scratch building. Now I've got some parts here that I pulled out of my spares box. I got some cannon barrels from a 140 scale Typhoon, and I've got some fuse extenders from some kit. I have no idea which one. We're gonna go ahead and use some of these parts to make a couple of cylinders and some actuating rods and whatnot, just to kind of have fun with it. And of course, I have my 0.3 millimeter solder. That's gonna be really, really helpful because we can use that for piping, for wiring, for anything else to kind of make it look a little bit more lived in, closer to actually having detail in there. This stuff is so, so handy. It's really flexible. Drop a little bit of super glue on there and you can bend and twist. It just really works well. And I think that's gonna be good. So let's go ahead and queue up that time lapse, push forward. Let's go ahead and detail the wheel wells as much as we can. And then we'll just move on to a couple other parts and pieces, see what we can do. Let's rock.
All right, everybody, we are back and I've shifted my attention over to the intakes here on the SU-15. Now, one of the issues I've had with these is they just don't fit. No matter what I did, I followed the instructions, I placed them where they needed to go and they just didn't work. They fit fine inside the fuselage, but when you looked down the intake, just see this huge step it doesn't look seamless. So I've decided to go ahead and just throw the instructions out and try something a little bit different. And that was focusing on getting a seamless look there on the front of the intake. And I think I've achieved that, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, we now can't close the fuselage because these are actually rotated so that the curvature of the intakes face the opposite direction. Not really ideal, to be honest, but it doesn't matter. I think the intakes look fine. We're going to make it work. So to combat this, I've decided to go ahead and take my X-Acto knife and we are going to shave down the sides here of the intakes right here where it meets that turbo fan looking insert. We're going to just cut this completely straight off. That's going to allow us to then go ahead and sandwich those together and it's going to join perfectly. At least that's my hope. I think that should be enough. But you know that happens sometimes when you make alterations and changes to a model to make it a little bit better than it was. Sometimes you run into problems like this. And honestly, this isn't really going to matter because you're not going to see anything on the inside. So I'm not really that concerned. I think we'll be able to make it work. I really do. Let's go ahead and just shave off both sides of that. And then we'll test fit the fuselage and see how we do. This should actually allow us to go ahead and close that fuselage up. We'll just put those turbofan inserts back on and I think we'll be perfectly fine. So just to recap, so far we've scratch built some of the wires and pistons and whatnot in the wheel wells. Those look fine. We went ahead and closed up the front missile pylons as well. That's great. When I go ahead and I put this into the side of the fuselage, you can see we have a lot more detailing right in here on the fuselage to do, but that's fine. We'll get that a little bit later. So I'm happy with the way this is turning out so far. Intake trunkings seem to be fine. Everything fits together nicely. So that I'm very pleased about. I also went ahead and put those engines together. And even though they're not as well detailed as I would like, you're really not going to see too much in there. It's going to be kind of tailed down. Now, one more thing I did want to go ahead and do before I call it quits for today. I need to add a little bit of some styrene in the very back of this fuselage insert. That's just going to be a little bit of added protection so that when I do go ahead and glue the top of the fuselage down to the fuselage, it's not going to fall in. It's going to be perfect. So like I said, just a little strip of styrene, a little bit of the Tamiya Extra Thin, make sure that that follows the contour of the fuselage. Then when we go ahead and we install the top fuselage insert, we're going to be fine. It's not going to fall in. It's going to have some support and that should be perfect. Plus the fuselage fits together very nicely since I shaved down the back of the intake trunkings. Everything looks like it's coming along. So we're going to go ahead and call it quiz for today. Until our next episode, you guys know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool, and we'll see you back here on episode number four of the NATO versus Warsaw Pact group build. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you soon.